What's up, YouTube? It's Coach Corey, and today we're going to rank all of the star powers from best to worst from 1 to 19. I'll tell you exactly how effective each star power is, and then in another video soon, maybe not my next one, but soon, I want to rank all the brawlers overall, not just their star powers, the whole brawler, all their stats, all the buffs, decreases they got. I'll go over that soon, but all right, let's get into today's video. Okay, so let's start out with the bottom three star powers. Starting at number 17 is Poco. So Poco's star power is whenever he dies, allies in his area get healed a thousand health. Now this area is actually pretty wide. It's um, even wider than Pam's turret heal for reference. Um, and a thousand health is a decent amount of health. It's uh, less than half of the amount that his super heals. So it's not a ton, but it's a noticeable amount. The one thing though is he has to die for it to be useful and Poco's main event type, Smash and Grab, he's one of the best gem carriers in the game so you want to have him carrying your gems but if he's dying that means he's losing all of his gems so in reality you never really want him to die. So this is not a great star power as it doesn't reward good gameplay. If you're playing very well with Poco, you're not going to die or you're rarely going to die so you really never really get to use his star power. So it's really not that useful. If your team is being rushed and he dies first, it can be useful. But like if he dies last, it's not useful at all. Um, I think the most useful situation for it, and this is even a maybe, is if Tara's super catches him and one or two of his teammates and he dies first. And then that allows them to help hopefully survive Tara's super. But, you know, he has to die first if he dies second or last or whatever it's not very useful so this isn't that useful of a star power and that's what's ring 17. now going at 18 is el primo so el primo star power is whenever he jumps and lands on a super anyone he hits gets hit with an extra fire damage for 400 damage over five seconds again not a very useful star power basically the best use for it is if you weren't going to kill that person um it gives some healing reduction so it denies healing for you know five seconds so they can't heal up for those five seconds but they're probably shooting you anyway since there's an el primo in your face so they probably weren't really going to be healing and then as far as helping kill someone faster well if el primo is going to kill them anyways you know that 400 damage over five seconds is less than one punch and he was probably going to kill them within five seconds anyways so it's really even less than that so it really doesn't help that much as far as killing someone sooner at best case, it makes him do one less punch. So again, not really that great of a star power. And now 19, in my opinion, the worst star power in the game is Daryl's. So Daryl's star power is when he is rolling in his super, he takes 70% less damage. Now this sounds not bad. I mean, you think of Bull's super, he easily takes damage when he's charging in a similar super to Daryl's. But Daryl's, he rolls way faster. In my opinion, it's pretty hard to hit Daryl while he's rolling with a super. At the least, maybe you're going to get one shot in. Um, it's honestly kind of hard to do on purpose sometimes. It's not going to happen that often, though. So it's really, in my opinion, not a very useful star power. I have it as the worst star power in the game. All right, and now that I went over the bottom three star powers in the game, let's go back up to the top. So at the number one spot for best star power in the game, I have Mortis. So Mortis's star power is really good. So what his star power is, is whenever an enemy brawler dies, a soul appears on the map that only that Mortis can see. And whenever he goes over that soul, if he's not at full health, he will gain 1200 health. So this is a lot of health. And throughout the course of a game, Mortis will get a lot of healing, a really good amount. So this is a very strong star power. What this really does is it allows him to be a lot more aggressive. He can stay near enemies a lot longer as he will have more ability to heal throughout the match and he'll be dying less often. So this also helps him a lot, especially after 1v1. So if he can kill someone and then this allows him to survive and escape afterwards, a lot more now so before he might have been able to kill someone but then he would die afterwards now he's much more likely to survive and come back and heal up now at number two is spike spike's star power is whenever he's standing in his super he gets healed up for 600 health per second so this is a really good star power essentially it allows spike to be a lot more aggressive 
Uh, it kind of makes him a bit like a mini Shelly, as he can sort of spike it at the ground, be right next to someone, and just stand in it and survive for a really long time. And his attack at close range does a good amount of damage as well, so he can do a lot of damage and stay healthy. It's a really strong star power. Throughout the course of a game, he can heal up a lot. And it can also even be used as an emergency healing thing. Instead of even attacking anyone, it can be just healing. So if he's about to die, he can throw it at the ground and heal himself up. And, you know, if he's carrying any gems, this can be very useful. There are a lot of different situations you can use this in. It makes it really hard for any short range uh, or medium range characters to attack Spike. If he has his super, because then he can just throw it at them, catch them in it, and then they're slowed. And he's healed up a ton, and they're taking damage, and he can throw his attack at them. So it's a very strong star power. In my opinion, it's the second best in the game. And now at number three, I have Colt. Colt's star power is he gets a passive ability. Throughout the whole game, he will move faster, aka he's going to run faster. So it's actually a little bit slower than Crow's move speed, but that makes him the second fastest brawler in the game. Now, this may not seem like a huge buff, but there are a ton of different situations where this is useful. Now, he dodges a lot more, so he's going to get hit less. He can also chase people more. It's going to be harder to escape from his shots. He already has a decent range. He does a ton of damage, so this helps him do even more. He can now also escape easier if a melee or short range catches him. He can now get out of range sooner. He now reaches any objective sooner. He gets back in the fight sooner. Um, you know, there are a lot of different situations where his star power is useful. So in my opinion, it's one of the better ones in the game. Okay, and now at number four is Jessie. Jessie's star power is whenever she shoots her turret, it heals it for 600 health. And now as a side benefit, it also, whenever she shoots her turret, her shots bounce off her turret and go towards the nearest enemy. So this is a great buff for Jessie. In my opinion, she really needed it. Now it's actually pretty hard to kill her turret. You need some high damage. You need a sort of range brawler with a high amount of health or maybe a thrower. You need, it's hard to kill her turret if she's healing it a lot. Her turret by itself was pretty strong, but it was somewhat easy to kill. Now it's gonna be pretty hard to kill. So this is a great buff for Jesse, and it gives her turret a lot more versatility and ability to deal damage. Additionally, it also gives Jesse the ability to do a little more damage as she can now bounce shots off her turret. And this gives her more opportunities to bounce shots as you can throw her turret aggressively and then shoot the turret a bunch so it heals up and then you get some easy bounce shots as well. This was a great star power for Jesse. And now at number five is Crow. So Crow's star power is whenever an enemy is poisoned by his daggers, they deal 10% less damage. So this is a very good star power. Over the course of a match, it will end up mitigating a good amount of damage, so it's definitely strong. It's sort of like a passive, as it's kind of hard to tell exactly what sort of effect it has. But over the course of a game, it definitely has a noticeable effect in my opinion, especially versus some brawlers that deal a lot of damage at once. So it's not a very exciting star power, but it's definitely a very good one. And at 6, we have Ricochet. Ricochet's star power is whenever he bounces his shots, including from his super, they then go faster and deal another 100 damage. So this is definitely a very good star power for Ricochet. Essentially, it makes it so on any of the maps where he had good bounce shots, he's now basically the best damage dealer option for those maps. On some maps where there aren't very good bounce shot options, it really doesn't help him that much. But overall, I think this is a great star power for Ricochet, and it makes him one of the best damage dealers in the game, although I don't think it's overpowered. And now at 7, I have Tara. Tara's star power is whenever she uses her super, a shadow Tara appears and chases the nearest enemy. Tara's shadow has 1600 health, it moves very fast, and it also has a small hitbox. It doesn't deal a lot of damage, but it basically, it's a very good distraction. So it allows Tara to focus on killing the enemy while they try and kill the, her shadow. If you do ignore her shadow, it can deal a decent amount of damage, but it's really best as a distraction. And while they're shooting her shadow, Tara and her teammates are shooting the enemies. It's definitely a pretty good star power. And at 8, I have Piper. Piper's star power is whenever she is in bushes, her shot does up to an additional 400 damage at max range. So this is a great star power for Piper. 
Um, especially on maps where she's bushes, she now becomes a really good option as a damage dealer. She's one of the best range killers in the game. She's very good at 1v1s and now she's even better. Essentially, it makes it a lot easier for her to two-shot people and even easier to one-shot mid-health people. And then additionally, it basically makes it easier for her to hit someone and for one of her teammates to finish them off because they'll have even lower health. This is a strong star power on certain maps. On some other maps, maybe not so much, so that's why it's a little bit lower, but it's still one of the better star powers in the game. And now at 9, I have Shelly. Shelly's star power is whenever she hits an enemy with her super, they become slowed for 3 seconds. The slow is very similar, basically the exact same as when someone is stuck in spike super. So essentially what this means is it's now much more likely if Shelly hits someone with their super that they're going to die. It allows Shelly to catch up to them and deal more damage with her shotgun or it allows for some of Shelly's teammates to help finish off and kill those enemies. So this is definitely a strong star power. It's not crazy, um, but it's definitely useful and I do like it for Shelly. At 10, I have Pam. Pam's star power is whenever she hits an enemy with her main attack, it heals herself and any allies in her radius for 30 health. And the radius is the same radius as her healing turret. So it's a pretty good radius, but it's not always gonna catch all of your allies. And this is definitely a decent star power. Over the course of a game, it will provide a good amount of healing. It's not really going to stop you from dying if someone rushes you and they deal a ton of damage to you. It's not going to heal a lot very fast, but it heals a decent amount over the course of a game. So if you're like mid health and you want to be shooting people, it can definitely heal you and your teammates up. It's not going to do a ton of healing, but it's definitely a good bonus. At 11, I have Barley. So Barley's star power is whenever he throws any of his main attack bottles, he gets healed up for 100 health. So this is a pretty good star power. Over the course of a game, it will provide a good amount of healing. Now, basically what it does is just allows him to be a little bit more aggressive. So if he's like mid health, not if he's low health, it's probably risky at low health, but if he's at mid health, he can just keep throwing instead of stopping to heal up. So he essentially has to stop to heal less often so he can be a little more aggressive. Um, and it definitely helps a good amount throughout the course of a game. It's not gonna really stop him from dying in the moment, but it can allow him to throw more shots, and it's definitely a pretty good star power. At 12, I have Nita. Nita's star power is whenever she hits an attack, it heals her bear for 180 health, or whenever her bear hits an attack, it heals her for 180 health. So this is pretty good. It's definitely a decent buff to Nita, but throughout the course of a game, it's not gonna result in a high amount of total healing, unless you're really dominating with Nita. It's definitely a decent buff, it's really not going to give Nita a lot of healing. Probably the more useful part is it allows her bear to stay alive longer. Um, it's a decent buff. It's not crazy. There are certain times where it's going to be very useful, and there are going to be certain times where it's going to be not so useful. I do like it for Nita, but I don't think it's always very useful, so that's why I have it at 12. At 13, I have Bo. Bo's star power is he can now see additional tiles whenever he's in bushes, and his teammates also get to see that additional stuff that Bo sees as well. It's essentially like another five tiles in each direction, I think, or maybe it's four, but there aren't very many maps where this star power is that useful. The most obvious examples are Snake Prairie and Outlaw Camp, but even on those maps, the bushes tend to get destroyed a good amount, especially later in the game, so obviously it's not very useful then. So while I think the star power has the potential to be useful on some maps, there's not a lot of cases where it's very useful, and even then, it's not always useful even on those maps. Now at 14, I have Dynamite. So Dynamite star power is whenever he is standing on one of his sticks of Dynamite or his super, and when it explodes, he will jump in the air. Now I think Dynamite's ranking could definitely change in the future. It's definitely to be determined. I think a lot of people aren't used to his star power yet, and they're definitely a high potential usefulness for it, but there's also some negatives as well. It makes it harder to deal with enemies in close range if they're attacking right at him, and he's trying to you know, hit them with his super. He now might accidentally jump in the air, and then they can attack him right when he lands, and he can't be attacking while he's in the air. So the usefulness is yet to be determined. There's definitely potential uses for it. He can jump over walls to escape or attack people. Definitely useful in showdown. 
But as far as exactly how useful it is, I think is yet to be determined. I think there's more uses for it we haven't yet discovered. So we'll see, this ranking could change for Dynamic, but right now I have him at 14. And at 15, I have Brock. So Brock's star power is whenever his main attack rockets explode, they set the ground on fire, and it, if you're on the fire, it deals 160 damage, and that fire lasts for about three seconds. So this isn't that useful of a star power. It's kind of easy to avoid the fires, so most often it doesn't deal that much damage. If you do end up in it, you're usually only in it for a second, maybe two at the most. So, you know, 160 damage or 320 damage. Over the course of a game, it's not that much damage. I think maybe they should either increase the radius of the fire or the damage. Either one would be a good option. In reality, though, it's not that great of a star power as it doesn't add that much damage. And last but not least, at 16, I have Bull. So Bull star power is whenever he is under 30% health, his reload speed doubles. So essentially what this does is if he was going to die before, now he gets an additional one or two shots in before he would have died. So if he's versus other short range brawlers versus people who are already in his range, it can be useful then. But if he's like escaping from a range brawler or someone who's longer range than him, it's not useful at all. There are a lot of cases where it's not very useful. I think the star power would be a lot better if they added in something like uh, increased movement speed. That way, if he's trying to escape, he can maybe escape. Um, something else, it definitely needs an added bonus to it. It's really not that great of a star power. All right, so that is it for my star power ranking video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave below in the comments what you think your favorite star power is or what you thought of my rankings. Now, just as a channel update, I am starting to stream, so if you guys want to play with me, I'm going to be streaming every Thursday, probably around 6 or 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, so look forward to that. And then also, I still want to do my top play series, but I'm sort of starting it over since I now only want to have it be for stuff from past the update, so the ones prior, I don't want to include for the next one, so please make sure to record your top plays and send them to my email at bstopplays at gmail.com. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for that, guys. Oh, and then I guess one of my later videos, again, will be ranking all the brawlers after the update. All right, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you later.